think you can stay on stage. <rire> euh, on va terminer cette euh, discussion euh, avec les trois intervenants et Jérémy pour euh, modérer euh, le débat sur ces différentes solutions concernant la nette neutralité qui nous ont été présentées euh, pendant les 20-25 minutes prochaines. Euh, Jérémy, c'est à vous. Yes, uh, thank you to, to all the three for your uh, very insightful and yet very different uh, perspectives. I was um, very enthusiastic and deeply moved by Daphne's presentation and I thought, wow, I would love to be bits of freedom. <laughs> and um, I think the, the, the whole was very much complimentary because, uh, John, you, you, um, you presented the, 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 the general situation. Daphne, uh, after Laure de la Rodière, well, Laure de la Rodière's presentation was very interesting because she's, she's very committed to it. She's an, uh, you may not know uh, about that, but she's an, a telecom engineer herself. So she really knows what she's talking about. Her report is very interesting. Uh, 80% of it looks like it was written by us, but even more nicely written. Um, but the, the question politically here in France is whether it will become reality Uh, before the 2012 elections, because after there is very little chance. And so this is left to see. W what you achieved in the Netherlands is so impressive and is really the, 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 the model of how to build a campaign. And I know it's not fully adopted yet, but it's, it's, it's on its very good We way. We have to get it through Senate still, but uh, there's good news. It seems like Belgium, uh, Belgium is on the way as well of implementing uh, net neutrality. I so maybe we could make this... Uh, a project of the three of us. Hmm. Uh, I, I heard mixed comments about the Belgian text, so we'll have to carefully analyze it before rejoicing. Um, I, I also appreciate very much uh, that transition when you said we must act. And I think, I hope, it is now clear for everyone here that the, the, the global internet is our responsibility. It is ours. We, we own it. We share it. And as we understand what is going on here, We have a duty as citizens to keep it like it is, to keep it open, to keep it free, to keep it neutral. We must do it for Wikipedia. We must do it for uh, Anonymous. We must do it for GNU Linux. We must do it for YouTube, for YouPorn, for everything that was listed on your, on your, your slides. We, we have to do it. And this was your conclusion. And Simone, you showed a very concrete example of what we can do, every one of us, to help um, at least documenting what those operators do. I believe very much in what, what you did in the Netherlands, Daphne, where you literally named and shamed KPN. You said, look everyone what they are doing and generated a shitstorm on them. So this is what you can do with Neubot, with citizen participation, and it fits very well with a great news I have to announce right now. Um, a few minutes ago, we as La Quadrature du Net and Bits of Freedom and many uh, other activists through Europe just opened a website that is called Respect My Net. Respectmynet.eu or respectmy.net is a citizen platform for everyone to help name and shame the operators who provide restricted, non-neutral internet access. It's very simple, it's a, a signaling platform. You can say, okay, I'm at SFR in France. I noticed that port 22 was blocked. And here is additional information, a TCP dump or a screenshot or, or, or whatever. Uh, I encourage all of you to tweet about it, to blog about it, to use it, to promote it. This way we can come with a very strong and serious list of infringement to net neutrality in order to convince any policymaker that would have listened too much at the, um, the lobbying of AT&T uh, telecom operators or, very important, the, the manufacturers, the hardware manufacturers, or, um, uh, sellers, those uh, Cisco, Alcatel, Lucent, uh, Huawei, N Nokia, who literally sell the hardware to restrict the net. So any politician who would have listened too much to them, thinking, oh, there's no real problem, there is no evidence whatsoever, we now can come with strong, solid, confirmed documentation. So I invite all, all of you to, to, to promote this. And um, 
Maybe we can now, uh, in this open discussion, uh, get a bit into the, the, the specifics, the, the nasty details that uh, were a bit described in, in everyone's presentation. One trend I'm very much uh, disturbed with at the moment is the evolution to the everything mobile. Um, what are the, the, the arguments we can push uh, well, I know the answer, but I want to, to hear yours. What are the arguments we can push when we hear the operators saying, oh, but listen to that, it's so expensive to build a mobile network, and bandwidth is so scarce, and we have so many problems. So, like in the US FCC guidelines, let's have net neutrality on the few remaining landlines, but on the mobile, mm. so. Well, for us and, and for, the, for the politicians in the Netherlands, it was very clear. If you look at it from the perspective of the internet user, there shouldn't be any difference between the landlines or the or their mobile internet. Um, the 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 fundamental right of freedom of communication sh should be as strong on on either one of of, uh, of those. Of course, there are uh, technical differences, and the law says in case of congestion, you can. Uh, um, uh, you can alter your your network management, um, and this means that in uh, that for mobile internet, there will be management uh, more often probably than on the landlines. But still, if this happens, then equal traffic should be treated e equally. So um, this is the way we solved the problem in the Netherlands. But um, um, I think there are maybe uh, big differences between countries as well, because the Netherlands, it's a very small country, not like the United States, where, where the network is built in, in a different manner. So, John, I'm, I'm afraid you, you'll have to reply at some stage that the whole political system in the US is corrupt at the moment. <laughs> Let's not get there, but what, what would be your, your answer on the question? Uh, well, quite a setup there, Jeremy, thank you. Uh, so first off, congratulations to Daphne and to her team for this great success, success in the making. Uh, and uh, also to Simone, the application looks wonderful, Nubat. Um, I think one of the reasons you were successful is you're a very persuasive speaker and your arguments back to Jeremy are right on and, and just the ones that I would make. Anything like network neutrality is a policy choice that we're making, right? So um, I'm now stepping back. I'm not an activist as you are, I'm an academic, and I can see the different sides of this argument. I happen to believe one side, as with my kind of personal hat on, but you can see the side of the argument that says it's very expensive to do these things, it's very uh, important that we allow innovation on the part of the carriers. It's very important that we promote innovation on the part of uh, those who are building the hardware, the Alcatel, Lucent, and Cisco's and so forth. And so there is a legitimate argument there. I think the point is we're making a choice, right? We're making a choice about the technology and the network that we wish to have in this digital era. And my view is that the, exactly the perspective that Daphne brought to it is the right one, which is if you start from the perspective of the citizens' uh, uh, rights in this context, which is to say every aspect of our life is being mediated through these technologies, whether it's economic or civic or learning or whatever else, that it is that important that we keep it open in this way and that we respect exactly as you suggested um, within each layer the passage of all packets so that, um, of course, we need to allow for reasonable network management the congestion rule is a good way to articulate that. Um, but I think that uh, to start from the premise that it's expensive to do, to start from the premise um, that it would be um, uh, you know, tricky and costly and so forth is the wrong one. We have to start from the citizen's viewpoint. Um, I do think your point about the political system in the United States being corrupt is fundamentally right. I think absolutely our system is dominated by money and politics in a completely corrupt way, and the system is, as a result, broken. So um, you prompted me a little bit in the comments earlier to talk about market-based solutions that might come about. And I think that's right. In some extent, if you're working in a corrupt political situation, you know, I would hope that there are forward-looking uh, entities that are doing business in such a way that they will provide these free and open um, types of services. Um, that's not the world I want to live in, where we have to rely on businesses to come up with that. Um, but it's better than not having them, I suppose. Can I ask you a question? You may. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, when you talk about market solutions, do you talk about self-regulation or just competitive uh, uh, parties that would uh, uh, 
uh, act in a different way. I mean the the latter. I mean the idea that you could imagine a, a network operator saying we're actually going to compete on freedom. We're going to op compete on um, on having a more open network and one where we commit to these particular rules about passing all packets uh, in a particular way. Um, so. Uh, I, I don't see that world emerging anytime soon in the United States. I understand there may be some uh, examples in Europe where that may be happening, free.fr as an example. Um, uh, I do think that um, we've relied on this um, notion a number of times in internet policy. So one example would be privacy. There have been a lot of discussions. In the United States, we have very, very um, a little in the way of restrictions on what corporations can do relative to privacy, in contrast to the um, data rules in Europe. Um, and many times people have said, oh, companies will compete on privacy, that consumers will be given more options right, by companies that will do better with your privacy. We just haven't seen that. Fundamentally, companies don't compete in that way. So I'm not holding out a lot of hope for it, um, but it would be great. That would be an alternative way to get there. As you mentioned, the coming of free on the French market with maybe a full IP uh, mobile network could change a lot of the, of the situation. Um, Simone, I'm, I'm curious of your your, your view on that, maybe a technical insight or whatever insight there is on the, on the mobile market, mobile well, situation? Um, first of all, I think that uh, as uh, activists, uh, you, La Quadratura du Net, uh, should push the concept uh, to people that uh, uh, wireless network could not work uh, as wired network. Uh, and uh, it's uh, normal that uh, if the resource uh, is shared, uh, it must be shared in some way. This is, uh, in my opinion, an important point uh, in communicating that, uh, because otherwise uh, it is possible to, to push uh, by the vendors the concept that uh, uh, you can get the same on wireless and on wired. Moreover, I think that uh, mm, we should, uh, in some way, incentivate solutions uh, that allow people having a router in their house to share their bandwidth, because this is a, a, a more clever allocation. I mean, if you are in the center of Paris uh, and uh, there is uh, a thousand people on the same cell, you have to divide the av available bandwidth for all those peoples. If you are uh, at the fourth floor, uh, or um, now, let's say the, f the first floor, and uh, someone is passing nearby in the road. Maybe the bandwidth is shared by two, three people, and it's the bandwidth, uh, let's say, of my router that I'm at work. So it, it could be used. For the reason, I think uh, we should um, do more development to uh, build uh, more clever routers that can have separate domains. My house domain, which gets uh, the best performance. And the other domain uh, that, uh, if I'm not using it, uh, can use the bandwidth. I think this is uh, something we should in incentivate. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, trying to, to push the idea that uh, even if we are in crisis, uh, it is good uh, to invest on fiber, to put fiber, and uh, uh, to, to to, to eventually use, as I said, wireless uh, just uh, for, uh, to, to the premise to serve some people. Because um, this is an investment that uh, I, I think will bring uh, a, a lot of revenues in, in the future years. And it could be a way to escape the crisis uh, with future markets. That's interesting. But actually, the, the operators try to bargain the development of the fiber against no regulation on net neutrality. They say, you know, we have to invest so much, so don't, don't put that on, on, on us. Uh, but the sharing of bandwidth, uh, I think that that's my guess. Maybe free.fr will do that, mm -hmm. hard-coded into the, the, either an app in the terminals or something like this. But in France, with the Adopi law, if you share your connection, you're a pirate. You know, your internet connection can be cut off. So it's, we're literally going backwards in that direction in France. And um, I have a question directed to, to John. It's, it's a bit of a technical question. And maybe unless you have also an, an answer to it, maybe we can afterwards open to, to questions uh, in, the, in the audience. Um, John, I want to, I have this um, fear about the managed services. Managed services, the service gérés en français. Um, is, for instance, uh, telephony over IP or a TV over IP. 
it sounds legitimate and it corresponds to a technical reality that an operator discriminates between TV over IP and the real internet. It's quite normal. But then what if the operators make deals, let's say, with YouTube or with Dailymotion and turn Dailymotion into a managed Dailymotion app, a managed Dailymotion, and then they would prioritize this Dailymotion TV over YouTube? What if operators um, try to, to manage parts of the internet in order to legitimately, or with the appearance of legitimacy, discriminate uh, communications. We came to that um, idea of a, of a description, of an ideal de des uh, description in our ideal law, that it is okay to discriminate managed service as long as they don't compete with existing services on the internet, and as long as the user has either the choice to disable that prioritization or to choose another competing service to benefit from the same prioritization. Do you think it is workable, and what is your view on, on, on the whole? I think you're just right to make this particular turn in the argument, because I think you could have the most wonderful network neutrality principles that apply to sort of straightforward IP-based transactions and then allow for this layer of, or series of layers of managed services and have everything become applications, then all of a sudden the network neutrality principle is literally meaningless, like it's completely worked around. On the other hand, we need to have the ability to have some additional services of this sort. Now, the argument in the United States is usually around public safety, for instance, so if we're trying to run some particular public safety application over this network, you know, how do we carve that out of the net neutrality um, debate and ensure that those packets go very quickly? So my view is you can do it. You should be very, very careful about it, and you have to set principles for when and how you can call it a managed service. So this is something with good drafting, I think, and of course good vigilance over time that we could work out. Um, so I think one thing is it can't be something that just could easily be offered over the regular IP networks and is just done this way to avoid the regulation, right? So there has to be some kind of uh, um, lock on the escape hatch that somebody might be going that way. Um, I think it needs to be regulated in a certain way that isn't discriminatory in various ways um, uh, against consumers. So I think you need to have a series of principles about it. And then I think you also need to say, okay, there's some that are for sort of public services, but second, if it's a consumer-facing application in this particular way, it needs to be clearly marketed as such, and it needs to be the citizen's choice in that particular way. And I think this is the particular regulatory twist that we need to be able um, to put in place in order to protect uh, consumer choice and innovation broadly um, and make this escape hatch not just a total you know, truck size loophole. And I'm sure you guys thought about this extensively in the Dutch example as well. Yes, of course, but this is why uh, uh, I told you about the iceberg. It's, it has been part of the debate, but it's, the debate isn't over yet. So um, uh, we think that this will be a large part of that is yet to come. Um, and I'm, I'm totally, uh, I totally agree with you. It's where do you draw the line? Um, uh, this is where it's, it, it's going to last for years, because I think this is a process that is going to be refined and refined every time again. So uh, I guess at, at the next conference of the Open World Forum, we could talk about that. Well, uh, my take on managed services is uh, this one. They are not evil per se, as long as me, as a user, can tweak the amount of my bandwidth that I would like to give to a managed service. If I want to see the match, it's okay for me to give all my bandwidth to the match, but the choice must be mine. I, I must have a way clear and uh, possibly easy, like a, a bar that I, I move, to decide the amount of managed and unmanaged services in my, um, uh, in my premise. Uh, and I think this kind of uh, removes the problem, because if I want at some point to use best effort, I return all the, the, the bar to, to best effort. It makes me think that we, we may just go and talk directly to the engineers, uh, the telecoms operators. Um, maybe... Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Uh, just last <laughs> thing. Uh, um, I think that even if uh, maybe what I said that does not exist right now, it's feasible and uh, it, it's worth spending research on that because it will preserve the openness and also um, allows for more technologies to be deployed and uh, etc. I see that we have uh, 15 minutes left. 
15 minutes left for questions. So maybe there, I'm sure there are lots of questions in the audience. I see one there. Uh, can somebody run the microphone? Yeah, Mr. Thank Emmanuel. You. Emmanuel. Uh, <laughs> I'd be interested in you guys outlining the 90 uh, remaining persons. Uh, you said there is an iceberg. We see the top of the iceberg. I'm interesting in, interested in, in what is in the blob that we actually don't see. Well, the the uh, one of the things that is definitely underwater is the managed services that we were just talking about. Um, that's for sure. But the other uh, parts are uh, how do you want the regulator to uh, uh, to, to to regulate and, and and to act, and how are you going to measure it? That's another question. And and who's going to measure it? Is it going to be a community? Um, which might be a solution, and it might be a very good solution, but is it enough for this huge amount of, of data that, that we'll get, and is it enough to, to analyze that data on, on a basis that, is, uh, uh, that gives us enough to, to, to work on on the coming years? So these are all questions that are coming uh, forward right now. Just to give you an idea. <laughs> Just to pick up on Daphne's first example about the uh, decision making, I think who decides is a crucial piece in each of these debates. And I think you could put it in the hands of an independent regular, the FCC in the United States or its equivalents in other instances. Um, I think we often have the problem, though, that we have a trouble getting really good engineering expertise and um, expertise that is independent of capture into these agencies. So I'm in favor, generally, of thinking about external sort of advisors groups that can make determinations based on a real engineering basis um, in a trustworthy way that would then at least be a very strong presumption as to whether or not these exceptions are necessary. I don't know how it's being thought about elsewhere, but I think the, the real um, sort of effect of these regulations will be in the implementation, and it's crucial that we think that all the way through. I think part of the answer is uh, continue to define more and more precisely, as precisely as possible, what are those reasonable network management policies, and by extension, which are the unreasonable ones. And talking with the engineers at the telecoms uh, operators is really helpful in that regard. Also, it's about defining the proper tools for enforcing those rules. Do we make um, the, the uh, regulator authority uh, the, the competency to wave a finger or do, do we allow for criminal sanctions against restrictions on fundamental freedoms of users? So this is also a whole range of experimentation, so to say. And there is the, um, an occasion, uh, sadly not in France, uh, with the transposition of the telecoms package. I said not in France because the minister, Eric Besson, chose to make the transposition with an ordinance which rule out any kind of democratic debate. Of course, the, the key issue in the EU debate was fundamental freedoms of the user. So why would you need a democratic debate? Um, so sadly, in countries where democratic debate would happen, we can experiment with new uh, attributions given to the uh, uh, network regulating authorities such as RCEP in France, for instance, promoting the ability for end users to access any content service and applications can be meaningless or can be turned into guaranteeing the ability for end users to access everything they want. So there might be some member states where a strong implementation of the telecoms package might give a solid net neutrality regulation. I think there are other questions. I th think I know there are. On va peut-être terminer ici parce que il y a quelques démos qui attendent. Okay, we we save 10 seconds. If you can wrap up or if you want to wrap up. Well, that's that's already wrapped up. Okay. It's about the the universality of the internet and the responsibility we all have together. And you see, by looking at us, that we can all, in very different way, play a role into it. And let me remind you that Respect My Net is up. Uh, so go use it and promote it. And let's continue to enjoy a share and share a free, open, therefore neutral internet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.